contain anti galamsey protesters have been writing in support of the protests and sharing some details about the plight of those in detention and the possibility of their innocence. Let's walk you through what they've been saying uh, from custody uh, as they've been. And we've been telling you how even uh, pushed by their lawyers to have bail granted them has hit a snag and they are to make that appearance at the High Court on the 7th of October. Uh, we provided you those details. Here's what they've been, they've been telling us. Felicity Nelson and then Elama Bebio, that's their handwriting from detention where they were picked up by the police uh, two weeks or a week ago uh, for protesting and demanding an end to illegal mining and the destruction of the country's lands, forest cover and water bodies. So this is what they've been writing. Let's try and get you a sense of exactly what they've been saying. And this one by Eloma Bebio, 26-year-old lawyer. A lot of you remember videos of her on social media with the handcuffs on and all of that. She says, Nkrumah smiles at timidity, wails in the face of the resilience demonstrated by the historic and remarkable protests. Today, Ghana youth arises and not only recommits to the struggle begun by our foremothers and fathers, but have reignited the long lost hope of realizing Nkrumah's Ghana. A great day it is indeed for a new dawn is upon us. That's Eloma Bebio. Many of you know her as Ama Governor. That's her writing from detention. And then Felicity Nelson as well. She penned uh, nearly two pages scribbling on what is a writing part, really. And she recounts the story of one of the other protesters who were picked up. Let's walk really through what she's been saying. Now, she says that when she was arrested by the police, there was a man who was also arrested. Now, this man's wife had just given birth at the 37 military hospital, and he had been given a bill of 2,400. He only had 1,600 on him as a person, so he stepped out to charge his phone at the 37 Trotter station to see if he could ask some friends or family for the rest of the money to top up so his wife could be discharged. It's a bit more in relation to that. So it says, whilst waiting for his phone to charge, he came to buy some coconut from a vendor near me. While I was being arrested, he was also arrested. When we were all rounded up, he pleaded that two police officers follow him into the hospital to confirm that his wife was actually on admission. All his pleas fell on deaf ears. He was also bundled into the police van. He was also remanded until the 8th of October. And she asked the question, this could have happened to anyone. Is this just? What kind of country are we living in? He was begging to call his wife to let her know he has been arrested. His request was denied. And so these and more really detail the stories of the 53 who've been in custody. And you will recall some of them detailing how they've had to be on their knees for over 12 hours because of a lack of space in the police cells and the prison cells where they've been locked up until October 8th, some October 9th, some October 10th. That is their harrowing story.